Hello again. Today we're going to be talking about a statistical test called the Student's T Test. So there are six steps to uh, performing the Student's T Test. The first thing we do is we state the null hypothesis, H0, and the alternative hypothesis, H1. And then we choose a significance level as a percentage, and we are going to call that alpha. The third thing we do is we actually calculate the test statistics T for our sample when we are collecting data. Then we will calculate a p-value using a calculator. And then if the p-value happens to be less than our alpha, then we will reject H0. And um, regardless of whether we accept H0 or reject H0, we are going to write our conclusion in the context of the problem. So let's uh, get started with an example where the statistics have already been calculated. So I already know my sample mean, my uh, sample standard deviation, and, and all of that. So let's say that there is an app that has been released that promises to improve the memory of people over 50 years old. So a research study showed that on average, out of a list of 70 words, people over 50 who don't use the app could remember 25 of them. And so we conducted our own study of 100 people over 50 who used the app, and we found that the sample mean was 28 words that they remembered, and the standard deviation was 8.3 words. So what we're going to do is we're going to conduct a one-tailed hypothesis test with a 5% significance level to determine whether the app actually works and whether it does help people remember more words. So the null hypothesis is always the situation where nothing changes, everything stays the same, and um, there was no effect of using the app at all. So the null hypothesis is going to be that mu equals 25. That's the same mean that it was before, assuming that people remember the same number of words even after using the app. And so the alternative hypothesis is that the new mean is going to be greater than 25, and that just means that people are, on average, remembering more words after using the app. So that's our null and alternative hypothesis. Since we're using a 5% significance level in the question, we set alpha to be that percentage as a decimal, which is 0 0.05. Typically, you're going to be told which significance level to use, so you just need to convert that to a decimal. Now we're going to calculate our test statistic t. This is the formula for calculating it. Um, we have t equals x bar minus our um, mu zero over s over root n. And so what do those mean? Uh, x bar in the numerator is going to be the mean of the sample. s in the denominator is going to be the standard deviation of the sample and n is going to be the sample size. So we were told all of those things, so it's just a matter of putting them into the formula. So x bar was 28, s was 8.3, and n was 100. So that means that our t statistic, after plugging all of that in, is 3.614. All right, so now we're going to uh, use our calculator to find a p-value. So here's how that works. Um, in my calculator, I go to menu two, which is statistics. And then there is where I get my table of values, but I don't really need to input a table of values because I already have all of my data. So I'm going to press F3, which is test. And there at the bottom of the screen, you see all of the possible tests. Well, this is the student T test, so I'll press F2, which is T. So now I have a one sample, two sample, and a regression. Well, we only have one sample, so we're going to press F1 for that. All right, and so here's what we're going to enter into the screen that uh, shows up. The data is not from a list, it's uh, from a variable. Um, we already have all of the uh, statistics from that sample. We have the mean and we have the standard deviation. So data is going to be variable, Mu is going to be greater than mu zero because that's what we're doing. We're doing a one-tailed T test where the new uh, average is hopefully better than the old average. So we're putting our alternative hypothesis there. Our mu zero is 25 and our X bar was 28 and our SX, which is our standard deviation, that's going to be 8.3. Our n is going to be 100 because we surveyed 100 people. 
and save res will be none. So there's me starting to input that information. Data is variable, mu is greater than mu zero, mu zero is 25, x bar is 28, sx is 8.3, n is 100. And after all of that is put in, I press exe, and I get that t is 3.61445783. And my p-value on the calculator is 0 0.00023765. So remember, our p-value was 0 0.00023765. That is less than our significance level, which is 0 0.05. So that means that we will reject our null hypothesis and we will accept our alternative hypothesis. So what does that mean for the problem? It means that uh, by accepting our alternative hypothesis, we can safely say that the app has been shown to improve the memory of people over 50. So people are remembering more words using the app. All right, so here's an example where we have the data instead of the statistics like the mean and the standard deviation. So we have a grocery store that claims that the self-checkout line reduces wait time of customers waiting to pay for their groceries. So before the self-checkout lines were introduced, the average wait time per customer was seven minutes. And so we conducted our own study in a store with self-checkout by collecting the wait times of 20 random customers. And so here are their wait times. So I've listed them all there. Um, I didn't want to do too many because this is just practice. Obviously, if you wanted to do a real survey, it would be more than 20 customers, but we're just kind of showing how you can do this with a list of data instead of having the mean and the standard deviation. Okay, we are going to conduct a one-tailed hypothesis test with a 5% significance level, and we're going to determine whether the average wait time decreases. So the null hypothesis means that nothing has changed, so uh, the mu is still going to be 7, just like it was, meaning that after the self-checkout, nothing changed. The average wait time was still 7. And the alternative is going to be that the wait time, the average wait time, is now less than 7 because of the self-checkout. So we were told that our significance level, again, was 5%, so that means alpha is 0.05. We calculate our T statistic again, our test statistic. So um, the calculator is actually gonna calculate that for us. So um, I could calculate X bar, I could calculate S, um, I could uh, plug in the number of people, but actually the uh, test statistic is calculated for us whether I use variable or whether I put the list of numbers in myself, okay? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to calculate a p-value. We're going to go through all of that. But remember, I don't have x bar. I don't have my sample standard deviation. So um, here's what I'm going to do instead. I'm still going to go to uh, the second item statistics on the menu. And here's the table. But now I actually have to use the table because I have a list of numbers. So I have to enter my data. That is um, all 20 of them. You'll notice how I went down to row 20 in the table. You just can't see the uh, rest of the numbers because the table scrolls down as you enter your data. So again, I press F3 because I am using a statistical test. And there you see the T option for F2. So I'm going to press F2. We still only have one sample. So that's uh, F1. And now I'm going to enter the following. I'm going to use that the data is in a list and I'm going to uh, press F1 for that. And my mu is going to be less than mu zero because I am trying to see whether the average wait time has actually gone down, meaning that the new average is lower than um, the old average. Mu zero is seven, that's what the average was before. And so my list of data is in list one. I actually need to tell my calculator which list has the data in it. And the frequency of each item in that list is one. Now this is helpful for when you have a frequency table and you have each element in your frequency table uh, showing up more than once. That's when you would use list two to store your frequencies, but that is another lesson. Um, what we know for now is we have 20 items in list one and each one of them has shown up once in my list because I have 20 data points. Save res is none and that's uh, typically the default. So there's everything entered in. The data is in a list. Mu is less than mu zero. Mu zero is seven. The list of data is list one. The frequency of each item in that list is just one, and save res is none. So now I press exe, and it gives me the same data 
um, organized the way it was before. Mu is less than seven. My T statistic is calculated there. My P value is there. And um, it actually calculated X bar and S and N for me just in case I wanted that. So my P value is approximately 0 0.003457. Um, so I noticed that that is less than my value of alpha, which is 0 0.05. So that means I will reject my null hypothesis and I will accept my alternative hypothesis. So uh, in the context of the problem, what that means is the self-checkout line actually does decrease the average wait time of the customer. So that is, an, that is a couple of examples of using a student t-test with real data. The first time we had the statistics already calculated. The second time all we had was a list of data. So we had to input that um, by using a table and having all of those statistics calculated for us. So if you have any questions about this, please let me know and I will see you tomorrow.